Hi, today we are going to talk about the main content of the first three lecture of the COMP201 Software Engineering 1. So the first thing is the first lecture is welcome to the module and we will briefly talk about the module delivery which will take three lectures and uh, uh, which takes place on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, and we also have a uh, one lab session which is going to take on week three. Uh, in in terms of the assessment, we will have um, exam coursework where the exam takes uh, sixty percent of the, and the two hours long, and the coursework they are going to be two coursework and. Uh, each of them works 20%, where the first assignment will be given on the uh, on the uh, week three on vital. Then we are going to talk about the software engineering uh, reading list. The uh, these are the recommended textbooks. You do not need to buy them, and uh, there are tons of. Uh, lectures in the uh, reading books in the library, you can borrow them. And then the syllabus, which are going to divide it into eight parts, where the first lecture, uh, the, the first con main content is the introduction to software engineering, the second one is software models, the third one is the software requirements, where the software model is just uh, talking about, uh, you know, the waterfall model, the evolutionary model, the iterative model, and the uh, reuse-oriented model. And uh, the sec the software requirements means uh, maybe it's about the requirement uh, engineering or requirement analyze, since the requirement is the most important part for the for the software development. And the formal specification part is mainly about uh, how how to express the software uh, engineering uh, part into a uh, into a uh, mathematical expression, and the software design and implementation part is uh, how you can how you can maybe transfer these system requirements into a system design perspective. Where how do you design the system, how do you design the subsystem, and the implementation part is how can you build the system through building the subsystem. And the UML means it's unified modeling language, and uh, the where basically it's the main content of this lecture. And finally, we're going to talk about uh, the social verification and validation and testing. The verification part is that where to test is, is seen from the perspective of a system. That whether the system met the functionality that is desired for this, uh, you know, the software requirement. And the validation part is from the user's perspective. The user does not care what has uh, maybe designed the functionality for this. Uh, for this, uh, uh, maybe for this uh, uh, software, they just want to from the user's experience. So it's uh, the validation part is just oriented from the user perspective, and testing part is just the uh, uh, you know whether it max uh, whether this uh, uh, f uh, software it is work or well functional and something like that. And additionally, we're going to talk about the. We're going to finally we're going to talk about the management of software process and the cost uh, estimation. It's much more from an um, um, uh, commercial perspective. So we're going to talk next module. We're going to talk about what is software engineering. So the what is software engineering? We firstly talk about the engineering and software stuff. By the way, the reason why we talk more about the system, syllabus outline is that. Uh, the syllabus, we, we need to pay more attention because the syllabus is the main content that will be covered in the final exam. So, uh, I will, uh, basically, the, the lecture that we talk about is syllabus is introduction to the software engineering one lecture, uh, software models around two lectures, system requirements around three or two lectures, formal specification is two lectures, software design maybe five lecture, uniform five lecture, verification, and uh, maybe two lecture, management of software, maybe two lecture. So 
based on this uh, you know the main content of the syllabus and you can see what are the important parts for the for this course and you can uh, maybe spend more time on the important parts. And then so what is of the engineering? So the engineering part is that making a stuff in a structured and disciplined manner and using a tried and tested approach. Is, yes. So just uh, using tried uh, and uh, tested approaches to make stuff in a much more structured and disciplined manner. And uh, the software part is just like the code and data design. So how do you how do you maybe uh, so when talking about software, we talk about the code and data design. So these are the main takeaways of this slide. And uh, then we, uh, we're going to talk about the, maybe the history of the software engineering. We're, we're talking more of, uh, dating back to the 1980, uh, 1968. And uh, we have figured out some crash uh, problems about the delay in software delivery and the higher cost of this uh, uh, from the initial, initial estimation and uh, unreliable unreliable, maybe unreliable uh, coding styles and uh, so therefore this is based on the, maybe the historical problem we need to introduce formal uh, maybe more advanced method and which is the reason why we're going to talk about software engineering. So why do we use software engineering? Because so the development is hard and uh, it is very important to distinguish the two kind of system where the easy system and hard system where the easy system is that one developer or one user or one experiment uses only and the hard system is that it considers multiple uh, developers and multiple users and products so, and uh, the experience with the uh, easy system is misleading because some kind of things cannot scale up. This experience you build in this uh, uh, easy system cannot build up. Therefore, uh, we need uh, we just make an analogy for that. Is that what if you can do maybe do the A star search and uh, you can you can you know just like uh, you can build a uh, maybe a bridge and which is relatively easy and a single person go up and uh, however what if you can you bring this maybe expertise or experiences you, you learn from uh, from uh, uh, maybe building a bridge or maybe a stream to maybe building a bridge that uh, will cross the river maybe near the Liverpool but this is not possible right you cannot you can, this kind of experience you cannot just scale up, so you need to more advance the thinking routines and the uh, principles and methods to follow them. That's why we come into play. So maybe well, the strictly speaking, is the problem is about complexity and uh, the the many sources of complexity and uh, you know the size is the key. Since you know the size of this solar project is screwing up, the complexity is uh, much higher than than the maybe size which is uh, rudimentary. So, for example, the Linux kernel contains uh, more than fifteen millions of fifteen millions of lines of code, and the Windows XP contains. Uh, more than 40 million of line of code. You know, think about 40 million of code. Have you ever write, if you write 40 line of code one day, and you're going to take a million years for a million days for you to for you to accomplish a uh, Windows uh, and For most of maybe our undergraduate in Liverpool, we Maybe we did not write forty line of code every day, right? Therefore, it seems it's a really, really hard thing. I mean, we only have around the two twenty thousand days, right? <laughs> that we need, you know, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps 
you know, 50, 50 students maybe working day by day, writing 40 lines of code one day to, you know, build a <laughs> uh, Windows chart XP and uh, finally we are going to deal with them and working from the start of our life, you know, uh, be baby and to the end of our life. Very interesting, huh? Just think about that. How we write forty line of code one day. Yeah. <laughs> so the software engineering is mainly about managing the complexity. Okay. The software engineering is mainly about managing complexity, trying to decompromise this you know, this complexity. So additional one another dimension where we can talk about software engineering is because the software failures can be serious where Maybe some sort of control the safety critical system and sort of protect the sensitive data or sort of new modern system which handle money, you know, that's a very important system. And the software engineering has to, you know, produce software which has a very low chance of faulting and uh, be able to demonstrate or prove the software has very low fault. So maybe through the testing or programming it to, to try it. This is how the software engineering maybe works, and uh, why maybe that maybe why it is important for some you know high highly uh, critical system, and software engineering task uh, are defined in maybe many four manners where we first define the requirements maybe what it should do, and then we're going to design the product maybe. Design how this product should look and to be constructed, and the UI design or software module design or the data design. And additionally, we're going to talk about the uh, implement and test, where we do the coding and the testing and validation. Uh, finally, we're going to manage the process where you know may, maybe draw some Gantt chart to manage the project uh, uh, software project management. So software engineering, oh, maybe we want to say more important about the software engineering where the economics of all the developed nations are dependent on software and uh, more and more systems are software based, controlled and software engineering is concerned with series of methods and tools for professional software development you know, some some uh, maybe mathematics needed to use MATLAB and uh, maybe some uh, some you know electronic engineering students need to use the PSPIs for for development. It was no worth noticing that maybe in the in the new lab that in Liverpool we use the iPad to do the experiment rather than you know some some old old machines. You know the iPad just has a simulator within that, right? To this is very fancy. It's much more software control. So additionally, we have the software maybe classified as critical or critical, maybe air traffic control, medical software control, nuclear reactor control. So sometimes they have the maybe this kind of system is much more better for using the formal method, isn't it? So the software engineering, of course, though maybe more more to talk about it. The, why it's so engineering important because so the cost can often dominate uh, computer system cost where the cost of the software on a PC are often greater than hardware and the software costs are more uh, are more maintainable than others to develop for example a system with a long life maintenance cost can be several times the depend, depend, de development cost so you know the maintenance cost is much more higher than the you know development cost and the software engineering concerned with the cost effective software development and the critical system and the critical system need the software engineering to uh, to avoid significantly or human or the financial cost so that is very important so maybe talk about the in, in we talk about some you know generally a frequently asked questions about you know, what is software is software engineering just like computer science what are the attributes of the good software that so, a good so, so what does the good software engineering do so what are the software okay so what are the software a software is just you know um, 
uh, the code and the data design, right? <laughs> so it's just a program that, oh, so it, apart from the program, we also have the documentation, you know, very important. The program and, the, uh, and the documentation are the software, okay? Program and documentation are the software. And so the product can be developed into a particular customer or maybe developed into the general market. The, the software product can be uh, maybe can be tail tool, uh, maybe maybe characteristic where we can see whether it is generic or maybe for a different customers or it's bespoken or it's custom, which is designed to a single customer according to the uh, specification. And uh, additionally, I'm going to talk about whether software engineering is just a computer science No, Software engineering is you know part of the computer science, but the computer science is much more theory based. And uh, uh, where the software engineering is uh, mainly about developing and delivering good software, which is much more engineering based. So the computer science gives the foundation for the practical aspects of the software engineering. It's very important. And uh, so what contributes to a good software, we have the maybe the maintainability. The, the maintainability means that uh, uh, software must be evaluable to meet the change needs. And the depend dependability means the software must be trustworthy. And the efficiency means the software should not make use for of the system resources, you know, just uh, you know, some backup. Of, back up to uh, maybe a program and the usability means that this program must be able to use by the user which has designed. And uh, why what does a good software engineering do? So for example they will predict their own productivity and work well in the team and uh, you know document their work and adopt a systematic and organized approach to their work and use appropriate tools and techniques depending on the problem to be solved, the development constraints, the resources available to produce the code which can be fixed in a modified and easy day by the user. So how 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 to think about that? The, a good software engineering, okay, a good software engineer, okay, is the first thing he must write code. But a bad software engineer also write code, right? So it should, it should, maybe it should write some documents, right? And, uh, and maybe it's, uh, you know, code are linked with documents, right? And then maybe they will think about that uh, uh, since uh, building an engineer is a team work, maybe we will work well with the team, right? Maybe that is another dimension, right? So maybe, and maybe in the depth dimension, we can think that uh, this good software engineering can adapt a systematic and organized approach, you know, trying to, you know, work with the team, keep a good documentation, and trying to do the systematic and organized approach. And while we are trying to maybe build this system abstractions and uh, we are going to during this process we're going to use some appropriate tools and techniques to, to help them. For example, maybe the de depend you know, some maybe VS code or some maybe some already known the algorithm or maybe yeah, so that's maybe some maybe some software packages or application program interface or something like that. And finally, we're going to talk about the produce code, which can be you know after we we do this code, we're going to make the code easily modified or fixed by other. Therefore, um, okay, think about the first one. Maybe when he first know this, when he first know this. Maybe we can think about that. How does the good software engineering do? Maybe when the when the good so when the maybe the software engineer uh, can listen to a software product. Maybe the first thing is, <coughs> is to maybe whether I can handle this, right? Which means it's very important. Sometimes I I also think that I can do many things, but. Sometimes I cannot do that. Therefore, 
predicts their own productivity is, is the top thing. And uh, other than that, you know, are going to talk about to find a team to talk about them, you know. And maybe they're going to work full time or, and maybe to do some brainstorming, to do some elicitations. And then they're going to document their work. And maybe the first meeting is the documentation, second meeting is documentation. Right. And then we are, then we are going to maybe based on these discussions, we are going to develop a systematic and organized approach. Well, during that approach, we are going to do the appropriate tools and techniques. Finally, this code can be easily added or modified by the user. So what is the software process? The software process is a set of activities where the goal is to maintain the, uh, uh, its goal is to develop or the evolution of the software. When we have these three main characteristics for the software pro process, which is the specifications, the development, validation, and the evolution. We have the, we have the specification, means the system, what the system should do under its development constraints. The development, um, the development may be uh, the production of the software system and the validation is checking whether the software is what the customer wants. The evolution is changing the software in response to the changing demand. So the software process is that you know we first understand what the customer wants. And then we are going to build this software that helps maybe what to 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 maybe prototype what the design or the system abstraction want. And additionally we are going to I mean, validate trying to maybe implement send this product implemented by us to the customer to see what do you like it. And then we are going to these are the main things, main things we may just understand what the customer want and uh, design uh, design this project and uh, validate whether it's work or not and trying to maintain it yeah we're, and trying to maybe maintain it or something called uh, evolution okay evolution so what is a good software process model so we have you know, we have already understand what is the software process where we need basically this four very important so what is kind of model that maybe consisting of this uh, component how does it maybe, maybe interact with each other to make a kind of software process where we can call the uh, simplified representation of a uh, sort of process with a perspective, a particular perspective. So we have the waterfall process model, the evolutionary development, the formal transformation, and the integration of the reusable programs. And the, maybe the examples of uh, the examples of perspective is the workflow, data flow, and the low action perspective. Just you know how. Do you think about uh, maybe the workflow is that maybe it's a product perspective that uh, or, or maybe data can be and uh, I think workflow and data flow are just the product based flow and the low and action perspective is from the person's flow. What what can I do to contribute to this software engineering and the 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 it's a work and the data is just like, you know, think about like a pipeline or manufacturing machine, manufacturing line where the data flow is just uh, some kind of gas or some kind of maybe liquid adding to this. Maybe you want to make a, I think to make a maybe pancake or something. You, you need to some, you need to maybe draw some, draw some, you need to draw some, and maybe maybe milk or some flavors within this pancake. So these are just kind of data, maybe data inputs and the workflow is just like you put it into the put it into the maybe the um how to say the 
put it into the machine, a baking machine, and you know, we do this work done, okay, and the work, something like that. So we have maybe, generally speaking, two, the, the, maybe, maybe three perspectives. We have the workflow, data flow, and the, the uh, action perspective in evaluating these models, okay, cool. Additionally, we can talk about the, maybe the cost for the software engineering, where we know that uh, around 120, uh, 150 billion of dollars has been spent on software engineering. Think about that. What is 1 billion? 1 billion is 1,000 million. Can you have 1,000? One thousand dollars, maybe, maybe, and one thousand, or one thousand. I mean, I have one million dollar, maybe one thousand million dollar, and one hundred and fifty billion or you know, something like that. And the cost on the system requirements, you know, maybe some some uh, highly uh safety system need more cost. And approximately 60, uh, 64 development cost and uh, 40 for the development cost and the ratio can depend on the system we use. So we are going to talk about the computer aiding. So additionally we're going to talk about the computer aiding software engineering. So you know the software, so there are some system which intended to provide some automatic support for software process activities such as maybe requirement analyze, we have some maybe tools to draw the man map and uh, the software modeling we can use some um, UML to, uh, drawing diagram and debugging testing definitely we have the maybe Visual Studio something like that. And the up so this case can be divided into the upper case and lower cases, where the upper cases is for the early stages of the requirement and design. Where the lower cases supports the later activities such as programming, debugging and testing. So so what there are also some challenges or some concerns with the models of the engineering where there are some legal agency system where the all the variable system must be maintained and updated and the heterogeneity where the system are distributed and include a mix of hardware and software. Uh, maybe some maybe to use different version of the which was still or to use different uh, they do use different maybe computer maybe you know, Windows or Mac, and the le legacy system means that uh, in the nineteen eighties that uh, the shopping online is illegal, but you know, that is definitely old for, from current perspective, and the delivery means that there's increasingly pressure for fasting and the delivery for the software and the trust is that whether this uh, developing techniques can be trusted by the user, whether maybe I can maybe see, I, I can maybe confront myself that I can sit in this uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe some x-ray machine where I can trust this uh, so it will not harm me, maybe give me too much uh, radiation will maybe kill me, that's something like that. So one thing go wrong. So we have all these kind of maybe failures, the raw case that uh, that uh, just died, maybe some of the failures based uh, result from the of the failures. We have you know you know one for maybe the medical, the first one medical issues, the second one is the financial issues, the third one is the astronomy issues, the third one is also from is the astronomy issues, you know. So it's also something we have in the medical or financial or astronomical uh, application must be highly reliable so to that, right? And then we're going to talk you know some some Recent failures with the healthcare government project 
you know, it's also like a financial or medical, you know, combination of financial and uh, and medical. And then the TV bank, you know, definitely the uh, uh, you know banking and uh, financial issues. So we have already made some important progress. Maybe we have we have maybe. Uh, the ability to produce much more complex software, and uh, we have adopted new sort of technology, and uh, additionally we can have better understanding of the activity that involve in the sort of development and the effective method to simplify design and deployment software has been developed. Uh, new notions will maybe introduce it, which means that we are just like building blocks, so many building blocks, just like the so, uh, waterfall models and the, some of these kind of models, and uh, to help us have uh, maybe a more higher higher perspective to think of from maybe the God's perspective to how things work, where we can interfere, is much, much higher, rather than, you know, Compiling, uh, maybe um, assembling language or something like that. So, additionally, we have the ethics and the professionalism in software engineering. We had the uh, we had the uh, uh, ethical behavior. You know, we we talk about whether we can trust the software engineer, right? So the software engineering world wide responsibility and simply the application itself. It it must be the honest and ethical responsible way to be respected. And uh, we have the two things where we need to make it confidentially respect the confidentially for the, maybe the explorers or the cleaners without a formal conf with uh, out a form of confidential agreement, you know, sometimes kind of we cannot sell other data to make money, you know, this is not legal. Confidently with maybe the software engineer should not misrepresent the level of competence. They should uh, not acknowledge us as the work is beyond their patents, right? Sometimes I, I should know that something I cannot do, something I can do, okay? Additionally, we have the, maybe the intellectual property rights. We um, we need to know the local law, local laws about the governing our intellectual property. And the computer misuse is that uh, the software engineer could not use uh, maybe to hack other people's computer. And the GDRP it means that uh, the engineers should. Uh, you know, create the respect that users privacy, you know, should not maybe left uh, maybe a kind of channel where we can get the user's input and it will make it easier to attack us. That, that's, we should, you know, make that principle. So, so what if a robot maybe design of AI or someone and maybe that you designed for a or someone who should be responsible. Is it you or the owner of the robot or the robot? Or what if it identifies the wrong person? Or, and maybe what if a, pro, a robot maybe <laughs> maybe produce another robot? There's so, so many ethical problems within the software engineering process. So let's do the quick recap. Where the software engineering, the engineering principle comes in with all aspects of the software development, and uh, the software engineer software product consists of both the actual program and the associated documentation. Look, the software contains the program and documentation. Remember that, and we have seen the reason for requiring a solid uh, principle. You know. Uh, what if uh, maybe you do not uh, you what if you do not have solid software engineering principle you will you need to maybe carry some some uh, carry on some um, 
uh, maybe woods to build a bridge that crossed the Mercy River, okay? And uh, software engineer must act in an ethical and professional manner at all times. Okay, the second uh, <coughs> lecture is mainly about the software process. Let's quickly recap from the first lecture. And then we have already finished that. And then the processes we are going to just like building a house, you know. Software engineer just like building a house, remember that. So if you think about that, if you want to build a house, what do you, what task do you need? So you need to know what to build. Do you want a house or maybe a, maybe a tent? And where to build it? Maybe do you build it near the river or build it in the mountain? So how much money do we want? Do we want to, to build a fancy one, expensive one, or some you know some some one that we can afford? That, that. So in terms of money, we can get this money. And um, how can we maybe design the maybe if we have the money, we can design the maybe the furniture within this uh, the, this uh, building and. Uh, Additionally, we have said the way we have the uh, they have the permissions in in build in this building, and maybe additionally we can we can we also have to you know build this uh, you know the foundation of the building and uh, you know, setting gradually building them up, and uh, finally test everything. And uh, we are going to make sure that it looks right. Um, maybe this is just kind of monitoring perspective, and uh, maybe go to see the customer for the validation and uh, trying to readjust to the customer the feedback. So similar process if we are going to make a software. So what is the process? We provide a service uh, to create a product. We always follow sequence of steps to accomplish the a set of tasks. You do not usually put up maybe a drawer wall before running a house. It is installed or bake a cake before all the ingredients is uh, mixed together. You can think of a series of activities as process. And the characteristic of the, the process is describes the major it prescribes the all of the major activities, and uh, we use the uh, use the resources to produce the intermediate and the final products, um, and uh, the may include some sub processes and has uh, entry and uh, extra uh, exist. Uh, a criteria and the activities are organized in a sequence. Activities may be constrained or controlled. The budget constraint, the availability of resources, and so forth. We, um, you know, process just to think about that. We need the, the main. We need the main uh, task for this project, and uh, we need to define the intermediate product, just like a manufacturing line. And uh, within this, uh, within this, uh, maybe intermediate products, so we need the, we need the sub process and maybe do this manufacturing, and then this is, this kind of activity must be organized in a sequential sequence, and activity must be constrained and controlled. You can just think that uh, it's a uh, back. You can think from the back that. Uh, Finally, we need to put, we need a uh, final product. So this is our main uh, activity. And before the main product, we have intermediate product. Based on this intermediate product, how to make them, we need the sub processes to do them. The sub processes must be organized in a sequential and uh, in a controlled and uh, sequential. So the the processes in building a house is that we first introduce the architect and maybe maybe if we want to design a house we need the site survey and uh, specify the house, the specify the building and do this plan. 
and uh, we apply for the planning permission. If we have the planning permission, we will have a secured funding. If not, we will, you know, go back to see to draw this house again to to satisfy our building, and then we will, you know, get the permission again. And finally, if we get them, we will secure this funding. Yeah, it's just like uh, you can see that there are some loops and the conditionings where we must have the maybe specific uh, specified plans for this house and uh, to apply the to apply the permission and uh, do that. You can see the entry for this building. And uh, in terms of the relationship between the so process and the software, we can see the the source is much more easier for uh, to change compared with the processes. The benefit is that it can be improved without limit, and uh, the problem is that often gets it falls gets falls as it evolves, and so the cost is hard to manage. The problem with the user. Also, what is the sort of process? Remember that we talk about that. We is the specification, development, and validation, and evolution. Remember that there are the main takeaway from the lecture. Okay. Specification, development, validation, and uh, validation and uh, uh, evolution. Cool. So I'm going to talk about the waterfall model. Yeah. Remember that we are going to define the different models that you uh, use these components to do things. Okay, so first the waterfall model. So the waterfall model is that um, we firstly define the requirement, and then we, uh, if, and then we will go to the system design, uh, and then we will go to the implementation and uh, unit testing. And then we're going to do the integration and the system testing. Additionally, we will do the operation and the maintenance. And based on that, we will you know go back to see the into. It is worth noticing that the system and the software. So additionally, the uh. So the main takeaway from the waterfall model is that it will will wait until the <coughs> last the next or the previous stage finish before the next stage start. Additionally, we are going to talk about the maybe uh, some characteristic of the waterfall model where there is a clear distinguishing between different aspects of the process and uh, it is a stepwise refinement where the sequential is easy to remember and uh, then the operation and the maintenance often takes long trade which means that uh, the the <coughs> the operation the operation here is uh, so mm, Maybe you know what if I want to change something? I need to go back and to check them. The the thing is that I'm not very sure what how does this back how does this back uh works in the <coughs> in the in the how to say how does this back work in the in the maintenance or and the phases are often overlap, uh, you know. Some phases are overlap cannot be done without overlapping, and uh, the waterfall method on the final requirement are very well understood. For example, it's some military um, application where uh, the final requirement is that maybe get this target or something, and it's really using the industry but it's common in military and aerospace applications. And that also 
problem. So we have the first is the phase is inflexible. Okay, the first thing is inflexible, which means it's hard to respond to change and uh, no fabrication step, which means that the program code is another design level. Hence, no commit script. The, the software can always be changed. So this one is not very clear, right? Um, I should so no fabrication. What does this fabrication here mean? Um, let's find. Let's take a uh, maybe. So and then a the, uh, no body experience for the uh, design analyzer. What is the body? Most of the no body of experience uh, design analyzed. Design for design analysis. Most of the time, the the program code helps the program are often not detected into the data of the project. No body of the experience. I'm not sure what this no body of experience means. And uh, uh, what if our model takes a static view of requirements, ignoring the changes needed, right? It, uh, it is that it's, uh, you know, ignoring the change of needing and the lack of uh, user involvement uh, when the system certification. It, uh, it lacks of the use, uh, the lack of user involvement, right? It lacks of user involvement and it is uh, uh, unrealistic and it does not uh, accommodate any prototype or reviews. And then we come to the evolutionary model. The evolutionary model here means evolution development interleaves stages of development. Oh, I see. So when we are developing something, we are also thinking about to you know um, to make uh, a the evolution interleaves with development. Create an initial implementation exposed to the user and revise. So the main takeaway here is, is that it take, creates an initial implementation exposed to the user and refine it. So uh, the two, there are two approaches which are explore, exploratory development and throwaway prototype. The exploratory development works with the customer to explore their requirement. Refining towards the final system, it starts well and still the requirement and the features and the requirement are then added to the customer and then the implementation refined and first. So it's basically the work with the customer to require to explore the requirements to refining towards final systems. Start with the well understood requirements. Well understood requirements. Start with well and true have and the feature requirement has been added to the customers and the, the pro feature requirements and then added to the customer implementation refined. Start, this is also quite confusing that the exploratory development starts with well understood requirements, right? Um, and then it is a throw away prototype, which means that to understand uh, the evolutionary development, you will throw away prototyping to understand the system requirements. They start with the poorly understood system requirement, and it's, de it's develop a quick and dirty design and get to host the user, get comments, um, and we find until the adaptive system is produced, if we wouldn't, uh, maybe the requirements are not reliable. Okay. Um, okay, I see, I see. What if you are not, uh, what if you are not uh, understanding the system well, you going to do this? This is very important. I mean, the thing, it's a, the main thing happening here is that what if you do not understand, you, you, you have understood and it helps. And you can talk, yes, we can talk to know whether it is good or not. And uh, however, what if you do not understand that it is exploratory? However, what if you do not 
should be wrong now. You, you just say I want this. Just like the G Jimmy and the darling mm, uh, Avanti, where you, I mean, the Avanti does not know how to be a king, right? And uh, he just wants to be a king. And uh, the king said, Do you want this? Oh, do you want this? And do you want this for so, so diving? Yeah, and it will even be some master as well. I know that it's a uh, uh, what I want, uh, some some kind of um, student who have taste or have great taste of maybe art or pleasure or something like that. And then we come to the evolutionary model. The evolutionary model here means, uh, um, I mean, both of the, they are, I mean, we, just, we come from an outline description and then we come to the, uh, so to speak, uh, some to a uh, co-current activities where they are, I mean, uh, interchanges of information between the simplification and development and the validation. So how to think about that? So from the simplification one, it's just like uh, um, the customer tells what to <coughs> What's the, I mean, the, maybe the manager of the customer tells the development program what they are going to do, and uh, the development program, uh, and the, the program uh, offers this, uh, this uh, uh, program to the customers for validation, and after the validation, the customer offers some feedback for the development, for the programmer, and uh, the after understanding the specification and the the <coughs> the program the program maybe need to uh, offer some feedback from the you know the case in the the program need to offer feedback uh, uh, of uh, receive information from the maybe the manager of the customer and the customer to, and uh, give feedback to them. And uh, based on this concurrent uh, activity, we are going to uh, introduce the uh, initial version, and later we're going to uh, introduce the intermediate version, the intermediate version, and the third and final version. So the evolutionary model is that we can have a lack of a lack of process and visibility. So yeah, compared with the with the Waterfall model is definitely that. And it can lead to poorly structured systems, especially in complex long term systems. Right? It maybe can lead to poorly structured systems if I compare long term systems. And especially, the, for example, um, because we, we cannot visualize the process, you know, this kind of uh, it exchanges is uh, so frequently that we do not know whether I have come talked to the customer manager or the customer, and it's especially the skills or maybe languages or program prototyping may be required. Yes, the prototyping is also prototyping is also kind of language. Um, Additionally, in reality, all the development are a degree of revolutionary model, and sometimes the specifications is mostly completed at the start at the and the, it and the, it's an added to it, and it is um, applicable to most systems, but it really is a critical system. So that is very important. That is the main difference. That in the civil critical system, we seldom use the evolutionary model, but it is very, you know, um, well adopted. And then formal system development. So this, the formal system development here, we talk about the transformation to mathematical expression through different uh, representation to an executable program. So the key thing is that. Uh, uh, the transformation that correctness per perceiving and it is straightforward to show that the program comes from the certification. Additionally, it's just like embedded in the clean room approach. Okay, clean room approach. Just the correct preserving, cor correctness preserving. Okay, and uh, for example, the formal system development takes the you know the 
requirement definition, the formal specification, the formal translation, and integration and system testing. So just just remember the requirement and uh, uh, I think the uh, this is only the development stage. Okay, this is this is uh, you 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 need to know that this is different from the specification, the revolutionary model here. We are here. We we are. With the formal, for, we also need the certification. We also need the validation. And uh, however, we talk about the formal system development, where the development part we need to you know, the start is the requirement and uh, and trying to you know build some abstraction from the formal specification, and then transform to the formal transformation, and then going to the integration system design. Just as I just uh, just a uh, uh, development phases where requirement definition, uh, formal specification, formal translation, and uh, integration system design. <coughs> formal uh, uh, requirement specification, formal uh, translation, formal a uh, formal specification, formal translation, integration system design. And uh, in terms of the formal translations, where you can see that it's just this, this maybe unique uh, union where we have the we we come from the formal specification to a uh, maybe equitable port <coughs> where we need to you know this is just some uh, uh, this is just some. Uh, I think I think it's it's some mathematical equation, and uh, this one is the uh, result one. And this is I think is proof. Or I think this P is programming. I think I think it's programming to intermediate result one, and uh, the. Um, but I'm not sure. I I'm not sure why it is the correctness. How how can I say it is correctness and uh, how can I say it is correct and what are these pieces? I think it's programming. Uh, maybe it's programming. Not the proof. So additionally, we're going to talk about maybe some coding, maybe in Z language with. Uh, um, if whether the dollar amount is less less than dollars or something like that, whether you know some logical experience, some uh, uh yeah some logical experience, some uh, uh, deduction, some maybe <coughs> deduction, and then we're going to talk about the formal system. System development problem where we need a specialized skills and training to apply the techniques, and it's difficult to formulate specify some aspects of the system, such as the user interface, can be more time consuming than other com approaches. Okay, you, you can you can see that the, and see that it's much more time consuming than spot maps. And uh, the, it's difficult for maybe the user interface. That it does not take some ma mathematical logic, but and uh, to make stakeholder may come and well understand the specification. We cannot uh, expect the stakeholder to have a good mathematical skills that the program does. And the uh, applicability that uh, critical system, especially those who are safety or security cases, must be made before the system is put into operation. Mm. Yeah, some uh, encryption or something like that, and then we come to the process iteration where the model development process takes iteration and fundament and try to provide many ways of managing rather than knowing the risk. And uh, the system requires and always evolve in the course of the process. So the so the system requirement always evolves the cause of the project. So the process iteration where the early stage is that the work is always a part of the process for large system. Iteration can be applied to any of the generic process models. 
um, so the so the iteration part is that you have only built one project and you keep on refining this one project and the evolutionary part is that you are building so many uh, maybe you can call them prototypes to to refine this uh, refine this uh, 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 to to see whether it works <laughs> it works it works and we, it's and then it can be modularized some kind of um some kind of characteristics can be maybe be suitable for one for one uh, trial and it can be adapted to other trials to improve that and additionally we can talk about the angel development where the a lightweight uh, approach to software development and uh, um, maybe it, it can include the Scrum and XP so the, the, it mainly focuses on the code development as code activity it is a test driven uh, development we are tested before the code and it's often used with peer programming and it is uh, iterative development and self-organized team. Okay, I have a lot of questions about this PowerPoint where so why do you think that uh, why do you think it is angular? Okay. The second thing is that uh, why it is lightweight. And uh, for example XP it is it is lightweight, I don't think so. And it is first on that code, I mean, this is not code free. And it tests driven development. And uh, how, how does it help quicker? I, I can see that it is more robust, but, but, but I cannot see oh, what is the organized of team and the iterative development. And uh, <laughs> I mean, how 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 can you see that it is Angel? And the incremental development is that uh, rather than deliver the system as a single delivery, the development and delivery is broken down into increments where each increment delivers a part of the required functionality. The user requirements are prioritized and with high priority requirements are included in early increments. Once the development of an increment is started, the requirement are frozen. So the incremental development is rather than deliver the system in a, a single delivery development, the delivery are broken down into incrementals, where each increment uh, delivering part of the required functionality. The user requirement are prioritized and uh, once the development of the increment is started, the requirement of an oh, I see, I see, I see. The development are broken down into increments. Oh, oh, I see, I see. So it is also an iterative one, right? Um, it's <laughs> okay. I see. It's just like a we. Where we can is it's an iterative one. Uh, okay, cool. So incremental uh, development uh, advantages that it's a well, you know, uh, value the customer value than early early increment access prototype to help e elite the requirement for later requirements and it's lower risk of overall project failures and uh, uh, the highest priority of the system service tend to receive the most sets in higher priority tends to re receive the most uh, setting testing it is much more the High highest uh, prioritization system tend to receive it lower the risk of I mean just to understand the customer need and trying to make it better. Most software projects involve the prototyping and the iterative building. Why not the incremental process? It lowers the risk of the making wrong product and uh, it allows uh, 
Mm. Why not uh, incremental? Uh, it's always a lot of this undergo more testing. Uh, it produces this works product as we go along, so that changes of event results. Uh, I mean, how? I mean, how? So we just recap that uh, the process is in a content drive dependent and nuclear station traffic control, and there's a highly uh, formalized processes and data testing simplifications. And the web development for small sites we can use prototyping. The web development for large typing we can use the uh, the uh, the story. Uh, we can use the story uh, storyboarding, and uh, for new station we need formalized method and testing detailed testing simplification. Yeah, testing because right, right. And the recap is that the, the, the process software and the process evolving producer and evolving software system that are represented in a software process model and general activities that are simplification design, implementation, validation, and evolution. And the generic process model describes the organic organization of software process. Generic process the organization of software for iterative process describes software as the cycle of cycle of the iterative process model describes software as the cycle of activity. And uh, the most important is specification. And here is the menu of the first uh, two lectures, the pretty much it. I'm going to cover the lectures later.